All righty, good morning, everybody, and welcome to episode seven of Coffee with Campus Consultancy. I'm joined today by the with the wonderful Thanu. Thanu, do you want to say hello? Hello, everybody. I hope everyone's having a lovely morning. I hope so. Yeah. And what's, what's in the mug there, Thanu? And if you are hearing us, uh, we'd love to see in the comments below. What are you drinking this morning? Is it coffee? Is it tea? Are you having breakfast? Are you just waking up and brushing the sleep out of your eyes? Um, Thanu, what's in the mug? What's in the mug? So, Josh, I don't actually drink coffee. Um, as oh, I'm sure I have I not told you this before yeah I, I actually just I hate the taste so um, I'm drinking just a good old um, good old tea yeah there yeah. you go well I I love coffee I've got to say um, but before I tell you about my love for coffee and if you love coffee where you can get your hands on some amazing coffee that also makes the world a better place um, for new and for the tea drinkers out there uh, what sort of tea are you into this morning this morning just um, straight salon tea just going back to my roots, <laughs> my mum made me one this morning, oh, um, beautiful. which is lovely. I'm usually a green tea gal, so hmm. this is relatively new for me. So I'll expand in my eyes. Oh. I like it. And today we're going to be talking about how to sort of balance gratitude and growth um, from someone who's achieved an awful lot, such as yourself, um, who's destined to achieve many more things, no doubt, but also someone who thinks about gratitude and being grateful for what we have. Um, and today, one of the things that I'm really grateful for is I'm obviously having the lights on and being in a, in a warm apartment. Yeah. Um, really grateful to be here with all of you today. So if you're here, if you're tuning in, we'd love to hear from you. Pop a little comment, the links uh Pop a comment down below so we can hear from you, give you a shout out, um, even bring you on if you're listening in. That would be awesome. Uh, but also, I'm really, really grateful today. We have a very special announcement. And as I bring up the stream in the background, I'll just make sure I can see your comments. I see we've already got a couple of comments on there. So I want to give you a shout out and thank you for joining us. Um, good morning, G. Good morning, Christine. Christine is my wonderful mother um, who tunes in in the oh. morning, which is fun too. <laughs> Super cute. Um, so lovely. And today we're really, really grateful to announce that we're partnering up with Kua. So Kua Coffee in Australia um, are a social enterprise uh, that is making the world a better place with every single cup of coffee sold. So they support uh, farmers and families in Uganda. They've supported 299 families, and, which is pretty amazing, and helped to deliver over 146,000 cups of coffee, which is pretty cool. Um, they're also in the circular economy, so they capture all the sort of grinds and, and um, coffee. What do you call coffee grinds? Coffee grinds? Yeah, we'll go with coffee, that. Coffee grinds. <laughs> That's where all the coffee grinds. Um, and so it's a really, really interesting organization, really interesting way to structure a social enterprise. Um, they've come runner-up really recently in a couple of massive awards, speaking on panels all over the world. And the, one of the co-founders, Darcy, um, is a friend of mine back from the college day. So awesome to have them involved. So if you would like to get your hands on a 500 gram bag of their coffee, if you'd like to start your coffee and join us in the morning with a great fresh cup of coffee that does good for the world, world positive coffee, screenshot what you're seeing right now, um, share it on LinkedIn, share it on Facebook, tag Kua in the in the post, tag Campus myself or Thanu in the post. We'd love to see it. And once a week, we'll pick someone awesome and send them out some great coffee. So thank you, Kua. Thanks for being involved. And hopefully we can share this um, with the world. Uh, and oops, jumping on on Facebook. Hi, Anup, how are you doing? Awesome to see you there. And thank you to everyone who's joining on LinkedIn Live as well. Tim saying, good morning. I'm grateful to hear your upbeat voice. So that's more than enough of my voice, but thank you very much, Tim. You're a gentleman, <laughs> sir. Let's hear from Thanu. Um, Thanu, I really like this topic that we're going to talk about today, gratitude and growth. Um, when you were a little bit younger, say, or when you were starting off university, which lots of the audience are in university or working with unis, where do you think your mindset was? Were you more focused on, on growing and developing? Were you more focused on being grateful for what you have? And how did you think about that a couple of years ago? And maybe how's that changed now? Yeah, great question. So I think when I was first starting university, I was very much in the mindset of um, just trying to figure things out. Um, so I don't think I had either of those in mind, really. Yeah, interesting. Um, yeah, I was just a matter of just, yeah, waiting in the water, not really trying to, you know, grow in particular or not really aware of being grateful for anything either. But I think as I went along, and I think we talked about this uh, when we did a podcast episode a couple of years ago as well, yeah. it was very much um, me just trying to continuously achieve things. One, because of my passion, but also just because I felt like it was something so inherent to me and something that I couldn't really stop doing. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, it's been interesting, though, over the last couple of years since we last had this sort of discussion. Um, mm. I really sort of tried to maintain a sense of, I guess, content, 
this. Um, mm. Someone said to me, you know, like where you are right now was like once your dream, you know, and it's something mm. that you should probably take some time to enjoy. But I don't think that has to be mutually exclusive. You can still, you know, go for, go for those ambitions, your goals, whatever. But yeah. um, still just take some time and day to just appreciate where, where you are. Totally, yeah. totally. And so let's, I think that's, that'd be a nice place to start today is just really focus in on and appreciate that which we have, that where we are right now. Um, so if you are tuning in, um, really pleased that you're here with us this morning, episode seven of Coffee with Campus Consultancy. Really appreciate you joining. Really appreciate Tenu from jumping on and giving us some of her time as well. Um, but I'd like to start with doing exactly that. Let's just think of a couple of things that we're really grateful for today. Um, so if you're in the comments, I'd love to know what's something that you are grateful for today. Um, and for me, one of the ways I do this is I look around. So wherever you are right now, if you're hearing our voices, I'd love you just to look around and see what's around you. Um, and gratitude, I think, is something where you you bring it in. It's something that you're appreciating, one, that there are good things in life, and two, that lots of those good things are external. Um, yeah, some of it can be I internal as well. But they yeah. can be things around you. So, you know, for example, if you look around right now, one thing I always start with is the weather. We go, okay, well, what's amazing if it's sunny outside? What's amazing about that? Well, it's great. Someone just rode by on a bicycle. They couldn't do that if it was raining. Love the natural light. Maybe go for a walk later. Uh, but if it's yeah. raining outside, does that make your morning cup of coffee even better? You know, does it mean that you get to wear your favorite snuggly jumper today? And I think it's it's choosing to direct your focus towards what's good. So, Thanu, for you yeah. this morning, if you're looking around your environment um, or thinking about your day ahead, uh, what are some little micro examples of things you could be grateful for? I'm super grateful for the five minutes I had before jumping on this call to just stand out on my balcony. And I was just, mm. so, just like, we had a really great day here in Adelaide, so beautiful weather. Just, um, yeah. It's very silent. There's not, there aren't any like not many people on the roads at the moment. Um, so yeah, just really listening, um, tuning in to the sounds of especially a lot of birds that have come out all of a sudden. Um, just watching them. I'm just yeah, grateful to have that moment of I guess just silence. Yeah, yeah I love that. And so eight AM start AEST means a seven thirty start Adelaide time. Yeah. For you? yeah. <laughs> Look at that. That's how committed you are. I'm so grateful. So we could all be, th if we're looking for one extra thing, Thanu's got up extra early to chat to us. Uh, if you're in the comments there on LinkedIn and on Facebook, I'd love to hear from you. What are you grateful for today? So G, jumping in on the comments there. What are you grateful for, my friend? Good morning. Um, Christine, Tim, Joseph, good morning to you. What are some things that you're grateful for? Let us know. We'd love to hear from you. I don't think you can share too much positivity. I don't no. think we can share too much of what we're grateful for in the world because I believe you bring it in. You bring it into you. And this doesn't mean we ignore what's wrong right now. There are people out there who might be tuning in who've lost their job yesterday or had a breakup yesterday or kicked their toe this morning or from the biggest struggles in life to the smallest little incidental problems. But at any moment, we can choose to focus on what we have and not what we don't have. We can focus on what's good and not on what's bad. And I think that mindset, if we don't turn that into a daily practice and you flick on the news and you just see what's wrong in the world today, the news's job is not to tell us what's great, it's to tell us what to be afraid of. And I think focusing our eyes on that can be really, really worrying. I don't think it does us an awful lot of good. I think that's a really important point you just brought up, Josh. I don't think you can be too positive in these times. I definitely have a few friends who, um, yeah, kind of do find, do find it really hard to display this positivity in a time when so many people around the world are experiencing a lot of difficulties but I guess my mindset is that you can't just then go and contribute more <laughs> to that negativity that's around the world it's okay mm. to feel horrible by the way like it's it, you don't have to be positive all the time that's what I think anyway but if you can sort of flip that mindset think about you know what can you do during this time to make either yourself or somebody else feel a little bit better about what's going on yeah. I think that's really important. Yeah, I think yeah. it'd be really powerful too. And I think with part of that that gratitude is it puts our problems in perspective sometimes as well. Um, I'm a big believer that all suffering comes from a focusing on self. So I know like if I'm suffering, I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about me. I'm like, yeah. how does this affect me? How does this affect the ego? How does it affect how I think other people view me? It's a focus on me. It's, and it's always like, about you. Yeah. Always, and, right? Um. I know you've looked a little bit into this as well, but more recently I've been looking more and more into, I guess, Buddhist philosophy and sort of more of those, more of those kind of wisdoms, to say the least. And um, yeah. I think a lot of it does focus on 
what you think of your not really think but like desire for yourself and if you can cut out that desire and realize that you know right now where you are you do have all these things that you should be grateful for I think a lot of the things minute things that we worry about can slowly be um deconstructed Mm, definitely and that's why I guess this conversation gets a little bit interesting too around the idea of there are lots of things we can be grateful for you know we can I, and until I met someone who didn't have feet and hands, I never woke up every morning and was grateful I had feet and hands. And then I met a guy with one finger and he said, did you uh, did you thank your lucky stars that you woke up this morning with feet and hands? And I was like, never in 25 years did I think about that. And he's like, don't you think it's maybe a good thing? Then aren't you happy about it? And I'm like, yeah, I am. I'm like, yeah. oh, it's like. And then that moment was like, oh, if I think about things that I don't normally think about and I take for granted, I can generate happiness where before it was just normal and we adapt to the new normal. Totally, yeah. That That is powerful when you start to go, okay, let's balance this sort of yin and yang between being grateful for what we have but also this striving to be better, to become more, um, and I think part of that is so you can then give more. So for yourself, how do you think the balance sits between being really grateful for what you have but also striving every day to become more, give more, um, learn more? Mm, it's a really good question and I don't think I've completely figured it out yeah. <laughs> either to be honest um yeah so I think it's just knowing at the back of my mind at least I try to um realize that I have really all the basic needs that you know I need to just survive and live and thrive not to sound cliche yeah um, no. but you know I'm really lucky to be here with my family right now I don't have to worry about food I don't have to you know worry about having a roof on top of my head and anything else is sort of extra I guess and yeah I think for me at least a real drive is to um, try and I guess contribute to the community around me so that's not something really that I see as being a benefit for myself necessarily so I think Mm. it's easier for me to to separate um I guess, my needs versus, like, my work um, because a lot of that is focused around, um, I guess, what I can give to others. Cool. And I'd love to hear, and I'm sure people would love to hear from you, Thanu, about what you're working on. And just before we jump into that, um, again, a quick reminder that if you're listening to this, awesome that we're uh, brought by our Impact Partner partner this morning, Kua. So we're going to be sharing a whole bunch about Kua Coffee and all the amazing work they're doing to contribute to the community. Um, So check out Kua. Um, You can look on Facebook at Kua Coffee AU or on LinkedIn at Kua. Um, And also, if you share this, if you take a little screenshot of this conversation this morning, tag them in it. We'll give away some free coffee at the end of the week, courtesy of them, which is amazing. Uh, And also, if you've got a question, if you want to come on and share with us, what's something you're grateful for today? Do you just want to give someone a shout out? Jump on. The link is on the screen, bit.ly forward slash CWCC EP07. And if you type that into your browser, we'll bring you in. Give someone a shout out. Say what you're grateful for. Is it a boss? Is it a colleague, a team member, a donor? Uh, what is it? Who is someone and how did they help you out this week? What are you grateful for? So, Sanu, we're sort of 13 minutes into a half an hour together. Um, what is it that you're working on at the moment? What is something, where's an area for you that you're focusing on developing or um, or growing in? What's something that's got you excited right now? Yeah, I'm, I wear quite a few hats. So it's mm-hmm. been a little bit of a juggle, especially transitioning to pretty much working here at my desk in all of those capacities. Um, very lucky to be working at um, Trinity College at the University of Melbourne awesome. um, as a res tutor and advisor. So that's taken up quite a lot of my time over the last few months and I've been really enjoying working with um, students for it, both in the academic capacity and um yeah, just general well-being senses as well. And I'm super, speaking of grateful, very grateful for, um, yeah, the other staff members and my boss who allowed me to come home and work remotely um, and to my students, most of whom are also at home at the moment because of what's going on, um, for continuously mm. sort of keeping in contact regardless. So, yeah, that's one thing I've definitely been putting a lot of energy into um, also at uni trying to work work things out online um, in my first semester of law, um, which has proved a little bit difficult. But um, thankfully, the university has been really good 
at providing yeah. that, that extra talk, support as well. Talk, talk to me about that. So students who are studying online, it's really easy to go, this isn't what I wanted, this isn't what I signed up for, uh, but that's neither necessarily leaning into growth or gratitude. So how do you think when people are studying online, they can, yeah. how, how could students reframe how they're thinking about online study to yeah. get more of both of these good things? Yeah, well, for me, at first, my brother, for example, his university is completely cancelled because, um, yeah, he's a medical student, so he can't literally go into the hospitals at the moment. So for me, like personally, just super grateful that I can continue studying, even though we complain a lot of the time. Um, I would have hated to extend my degree by a semester. So really grateful to, even though it's not ideal, have that opportunity to continue to continue to study. I mean, what sure. else are we meant to meant to do right now anyway? Like, might as well, um, might as well learn. And I think that's that's yeah. something to be grateful about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no doubt um, yeah that's an interesting insight too the idea of like you can be grateful about the learning in itself like do you think it's possible to layer the gratitude on top of the growth for sure yeah i think it's it's really important to be grateful to have the opportunity to grow um and yeah have as i said those basic things covered so you can then um continue to work on yourself and continue to expand your knowledge Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What, what do you reckon, Josh, like in your sort of capacity right now to you, you find some more things? Yeah. Um, in regards to what do you mean? Specifically about um, the capacity to grow while remaining grateful. Yeah, definitely. Time. Yeah, so for when times are tough, so say like right now, when times are tough, when people might be tuning in, and if you are tuning in, Episode 7, Coffee with Campus Consultancy, drop a little comment below, let us know that you're here, we'd love to shout you out, um, and we'd love to welcome you onto the show to ask a question if you have a thought or an insight. Um, Scott joining, uh, who's jumped on uh, early, uh, later last week, so great to see you again, Scott, and Batsel, um, also great to see you there. Batsel's also shared some good news, which is apparently a great alternative to not-so-positive news, so that's a great shout-out. Um, yeah. So for me, definitely when things are tough, my home base is always the gratitude. It's always, it's so easy to find things that aren't the way you would like them to be and therefore be unhappy all day. Like it's so easy. And I think one of the struggles with that is once you fall into that cycle, it's a negative feedback loop. It's like, can I find one thing? So if you're listening right now, can you find one thing in life that's not how you want it to be? Everyone can say yes. So I was like, okay, if I can find one thing that's not how I want it to be, can I imagine how that might affect me if it stays this way long term and it never changes? Yes, life could get worse. Okay, if life got worse, what else might go wrong? Well, then this other thing would go wrong. Okay, and if that goes wrong, might I lose a job, a relationship, money, prestige, feeling of status, like all of that stuff. Oh, oh, yeah, then something else could go wrong and it just feeds into itself. So for me to flip that if I ever notice there's something that's getting me down, this is not perfect, right? This is a practice. That's why we talk about it every day um, because we try to get better at it is to go, if I can notice one thing in life at any time that's wrong, I can probably find something that's good, like two hands, two feet right now, you know, wake up with the lights on, running clean water, like really hard to have coffee if you don't have clean water, you know? Yeah. So look like all the technology that even makes this possible, that you're in a different state, that we can have this conversation, that people are even interested to tune in, like, for me, coming up with a list of things and sometimes about the 5, 10, 15 mark, I go, whoa, who who am I to think I could complain about anything, you know? Yeah. And complain is in unnecessarily bring in negativity is really what I mean. So for me, the home base is always do the gratitude piece, get in a good mindset, and then from that go, because for me, a lot of the gratitude is external. I really think about all the people who've made this possible. Like I didn't invent this microphone, but I'm sure glad somebody did. Um, and then the growth bit is internal. I'm growing for me. Um, I think the more you grow like an apple tree, the more you grow, the more you have to give. So the gratitude lets me say, okay, my place in the world is here surrounded by all of these things. What are all the ways I could be grateful for all of these amazing things? Uh, and I think that's endless. And then once I've got myself in that state, it's like, okay, what do I need to do so I can be, um, I can be an influence in other people's lives that maybe they're grateful for. Um, and then so then I'm sort of in a circular way, I'm like taking from the world and from the universe and then I'm giving back to it. Um, and one of our big that's, things with ca campus is to give more than we take. So, yeah. Yeah, that's a really good way to think about it. I reckon for sure that then separates the always me, 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 me and 
really, as you said, projects on what can you give to the outer world while it's giving so much to you. So yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's an interesting one, hey, of like, especially when you start your day, why I like talking to you about this this morning, although I always love talking to you, but especially about this topic in the morning is if the day starts off with scarcity, if it's jumping in the inbox and you immediately look at a bunch of things you didn't do yesterday, it's a negative frame. If you're going to work and the first meeting is something that's like, it doesn't build you up, but it tears you down. Like so much of that stuff can be so negative. Um, And when we're disconnected from our peers, our colleagues, our co-workers, our teams. Um, I think you miss that kind of like coffee in the kitchen to start the day, casual kind of chit chat, which I think so often can, can build people up. Um, yeah. So how do, you, how do you do that if you're living alone or if you don't have access to um, to someone to chat to in the morning? I'm not sure. Yeah, and I think it's especially for people who do maybe have more extroverted tendencies as well. Like that's really difficult if you get your energy from continuously talking to people that's effectively been cut off because of yeah. this. So, yeah, that's, again, something something to think about and whether there are other methods to, to get that energy and maybe it is to practice, you know, gratitude every morning. Mm. Um, yeah. Mm. I love it. Okay. Um, just checking in on how we're looking in here. Love it. Love seeing the comments kind of flowing in. And if you are tuning in, we'd love to hear from you. What do you think? What are you grateful for today? What are you doing? What are you involved with? Um, What are you glad that's a part of your life? And maybe who? Who is someone? So whether it's screenshotting this and sharing it with them and tagging them and saying, you are the person I thought of, whether it's just sending someone a text message, a little red love heart, um, or just saying, hey, I was thinking about you this morning. Really glad that you're in my life in some capacity. Um, I think it's a really powerful way to start the day. And as Christine's jumped in there on the comments and saying, like, Gratitude fuels that growth. So I would wonder if you don't have that gratitude for what you have. It was interesting at the start, Thanu, when you were saying, and not saying this is true for you, but at the start you, when I said, oh, was it gratitude or growth when you started uni? You said, oh, kind of neither, but I was focused on achievement. Yeah. Do you think there's a delineation there to be had between achievement and growth? Like can you achieve lots yeah. of things and not be growing in the direction you want to grow in perhaps? Yeah. Um, I think that was a huge thing for me. You hit the nail on the head when I first started university. I was achieving a lot of things, but it wasn't necessarily what I wanted. I didn't I didn't feel like personally I was growing out of them at all. So it took a lot for me. Um, and only really last year after yeah, taking some time away um, from that sort of daily grind and just living, traveling, all that, that I really realized that, you know, a lot of things that I was doing weren't actually what I what I wanted and prevented me from experiencing that that personal growth, even though I was achieving. So I think there is definitely a distinction to be made between between those two things and that yeah, continuously achieving things that don't actually make you feel f- fulfilled. Um, mm. maybe that's maybe that's not growth for you. Yeah. Mm. I think we're getting somewhere now, aren't we? Because I think the, the gratitude has an emotional element, definitely. It's like, I feel good. That's the whole point of it. Like, you don't sit there like, gosh, I'm grateful for everything. Now I feel like crap. Like, it doesn't work like that, you know. It makes you feel good. It's like, it's good to feel good. Um, I think I wonder with, with, I think that's right bang on with that growth of like, is it helping you feel the way you want to feel? Or is it helping others feel the way that you hope that they feel too? Um, And, you know, I think there's an argument there for in Australia, the data, the Gallup data is more than six out of seven workers don't like what they do. They're either neutral or actively disengaged from their job. So, like, look at seven people, you know, on a Zoom call or look at seven people getting off the bus or the train. Pick six of them, more than six out of seven technically, um, but pick six of them. Six of them either are passive, don't care, or don't like what they do. It's like what we're doing isn't working for most people. And it was me. Like, I was there. I had an engineering yeah. job, like, look good on paper, but, like, I didn't. I didn't love it. I told myself I loved it, but I came home every day and I woke up every morning. I was like, yeah, like, I should be, I sh- and the thing was, I think the trick there with me was I knew I should be grateful. I was like, I've got this job. Who am I to complain? So many people don't have this opportunity. But because that growth wasn't in the direction that I wanted, it was ladder was leaning up against the wrong building to take a Stephen Covey line. Um, I was climbing higher and higher. It was achieve, achieve, achieve. But I wasn't personally growing. I didn't feel like I was becoming a better human. Um, my relationships weren't growing. And then it became harder to be grateful for it because I, I almost maybe... I don't know if this is too strong of a word, but maybe even resented it a little bit. Resented 
resented the, what? The, resented the a job. Yeah, resented the well, resented that I in my mind my map was achieve, 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 get an engineering job equals happiness, and so I'd sure. achieve, 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 got an engineering job, wasn't happy. So I'd kind of like yeah. that. It was that, I, that entirely my fault. Entirely my fault. Mm-hmm. It was a wrong roadmap. Like, yeah. you know, if you get in the car, yeah. you type the wrong thing in the GPS, you end up at the wrong place. You're super pissed off. At the end of the day, you're like, I typed it in. Me. Nobody so like, else to blame. Yeah. I typed the wrong thing in. I got there successfully, but it successfully ended up at the wrong place. And then I think that for me was like, oh, okay, I'm kind of mad that I'm in this situation, but it's the thing I always wanted or wanted. But you want- wanted. Yeah, and I, I did want it. Like you asked me, what do you want? Like an engineering job. Um, but I think I wanted it for I didn't have the the insight or the experience to know that it wasn't the thing that I should have been wanting. Um, and I, and I think me. it takes a lot of courage to admit that as well. Um, yeah. I think for a lot of people, it's it's something maybe that they thought they wanted for a long time. So to give up that is almost losing a part of yourself in a way as well. But I think it's, like you said, making room to, to realise those things about yourself. Maybe your preferences have changed. Maybe what you, what you want has changed and that, that's okay. And, yeah, um, yeah. I think that's that's a really interesting point you just brought up. Mm. And so if you're listening to this today, I'd like to ask you the question, if you're not grateful for the degree you're studying or the job you're doing, might you be in the wrong degree or the wrong job? And if you think about your plan for the day, your meetings, the work you're doing, the subjects you're studying, the courses you're doing, like a friend of mine said this great idea the other day, he was like, my best mate from high school, he's doing a master's. And he's like, whenever I get mad that I have an assignment to do, I remember I'm paying to make them do for them to make me doing assignments. Yeah, yeah. I was just yeah, so yeah, good. He's like, I'm literally, that is what I I give them money and they yeah. make me do assignments. And now I'm yeah. mad that they're making me do assignments. I was like, it's such a good reframe, you know? Literally. So I think, literally. You know? Which, um, Josh, yeah. I'd love to ask you for people who may be thinking that that's quite a privileged position to be able to make a choice about what you really love to do rather than what yeah. you need to do what would you say to those people who are maybe studying a degree or just you know doing a job to really make ends meet or what they think will make ends meet what would yeah. you say to those people yeah definitely so i just read i just really define that purpose like if you're doing a job just to make ends meet um and that then lets you have a family or lets you pay your rent or lets you set you up for future success then that's part of the journey you know, like when I left engineering, I went and like kind of traveled, but like run out of money working for a euro an hour, you know, people are like, oh, well, you're in Europe, you know? Yeah. Well, like make beds for 50 hours for $50 and see how grateful you are. You know, there's always a reason to find the negative. And I was just obsessed with looking at the positive of things always. Um, so I think if you're in a situation where you're just making something work, patience and taking the long view is a big key. Can you get out of it? Um, and if anyone has done it before, like if someone's come out of that situation, I just think there's hope that you can too. And if we look, if we want to surround ourselves with 10 reasons why we can't do it, I just don't think that gives us a percentage increased chance of doing it. Like, I don't think it's fair, but like there are lots of things that aren't fair, but it's like, are you making the best of your situation? And for me, that the best of that situation goes, okay, is anyone on the planet, anybody on the planet got it worse than me? One person. And for 8 billion of us minus one, that's true. There's always someone who's got it harder. So it's like, how do we want to find, you know, if we've got electricity right now, 700 million people don't have clean drinking water. They're not tuning into a LinkedIn live. So if we're hearing this, it's like, who gets to define the boundaries of where, uh, where oh. that privilege stops? Um, so for me, it's saying, I don't think I have the answers for how other people should live their lives. I have things that have worked for me and I know for me that it's worked. And when I've shared it with other people, it's worked for them. Um, and if you're in a position where you're at a university and you haven't finished your degree, there's the option to pivot, change degrees. I mean, you're doing a JD now, but weren't necessarily starting there. So there's like that choice to, to, to change, you know, or, or to take some time off and work and figure it out, um, or to go and like, I spent, you know, I left engineering. My next job was for something like $9 an hour in a t-shirt store in Canada. It was called cool as a moose. And That's what I'd be I grateful that you had that experience. Yeah. Oh, I'm super grateful. Yeah. I met some amazing yeah. people. I learned some awesome things. Like I also learned that yeah. I don't want to work. Um, I don't want to work for minimum wage. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with working for minimum wage, but I thought that's not. That wasn't what I wanted to do with my whole life. I wanted to do something that 
that really pushed and challenged me. And at the end of a shift, when I came home and said, okay, what have I learned today? I'm like, maybe not tons besides folding clothes. You know, I was like, okay, well, maybe this is a period of my life. This is a winter where I get through this winter. And when I come out, spring always follows the winter. And maybe there's an opportunity that will come next. So um, I think appreciating what you have, if you see it and it's like, oh, easy for them to say, you're focusing on what you don't have instantly versus yeah. what you do have and you're focusing on what you can't control what you can, versus what you can control. So right, right, mine, yeah. Mine's always coming back to that. What can you control? What can you influence? And what's the smallest minimum thing you can influence today? So if you're listening to this right now and you're like, okay, so my question to you of if you're not grateful for a job, for a degree, um, for a partner, a relationship, a situation, if you're not grateful for it, maybe something's wrong there. Maybe that's the signal, not the noise. Maybe that's what we need to tune into. But also if you are noticing that, what's the smallest possible thing you can do today to change? Is it read a new book? Is it take a new perspective? Is it have an honest conversation? Is it write down a pros and cons list? Um, I think it sounds so corny, but so often in life, you write down all the good things and all the bad things. And you're like, actually, there's a lot of good about this. Or actually, oh, there's a whole lot about this I don't like. Like, maybe that's a sign I need to change it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I want to let you go in a few minutes. So I know you've got a busy day. Um, and I really want to be respectful of your time and appreciate it. But where, where do you think you land on on this? Having Having just explored it, I guess we've kind of thrown two things in a bowl and stirred them around a bit and sort of seen what what came out. I've definitely like got a new a couple of new perspectives on this. Um, so selfishly, it's been really helpful for me. Um, <laughs> but where do you think for the next, if you look forward over the next few months or over the rest of the year um, from the position that you're in, um, how do you think you think about, yeah, developing and continuing to, to develop but also making time in your day and your week and your life to to be grateful for what you have? Mm. I think after having this chat, which has selfishly been very helpful for myself as well, um, I think we can. I think we can combine the, combine the two. I think by growing, as we were talking about, we we can be grateful for that growth every day, and it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be separate. But it depends what works for you. You know, for some people, it may be like writing in a gratitude journal every day. I know for me, that's probably not the best way. So I think it's it's continuously. Through that, through that growth, which I will continue to do, hopefully over the over the next couple of months, to be grateful mm. for that growth and to be grateful for where I was, where I am now, and hopefully where I will be in the future as well. Mm. Absolutely love that. Um, so before we let you go, a couple of great points of gratitude from two people who have jumped in on the comments and I really want to awesome. shout out and appreciate. So Emma's jumped in, said, morning, Josh and Thanu. The sunshine in Melbourne is super uplifting and energizing. I'm so grateful to have been on the phone this morning um, when the live started. I love listening to these ideas and your passion. A great start to the day. So thanks, Emma. Oh, so glad that you thanks, joined us. Um, and then also, Juliet, great session to start off my day with. Grateful that you have both woken up bright and early this morning to hold this live. Thank you. Wow. And I guess... Like isn't like well, I guess with that, it's maybe a nice place to sort of to sort of start wrapping it up. In that, I mean, I can have a conversation with you, and that's amazing. We can both feel really good. And if like if that makes three other people feel good, two other people feel good. I always come back to our time together at Teacher Australia, and you'd always hear it's always like that kind of almost a trope in teaching where it's like if I can change the life of one student, yeah. And so it's like, you know, if we're if you help 299 families like Kua have who we're working with as an impact partner, amazing. If you help one family though, that's also awesome. Like, and if you help one student at Trinity or we help one student in a workshop today, or if we help three people have a slightly better start to their day in some small way, like, I think that's amazing. And I think that's worth taking the risk of doing something new, putting yourself on the line. Um, and so I wonder today, if you're, if you're listening, if you're tuning in, what's something you can do today that might be a little bit scary um, that might not be within your comfort zone but might lead to a little bit of growth and just might help somebody else be really grateful for your presence in their life today exactly mm. imagine if you could start a little bit of a, a gratitude train you know, each person mm. spreads that to, to three more people soon enough the whole world um, will start the morning being, being a little bit more grateful than they may have been I think it's how it works. And, you know, Coffee with Campus Consultancy, it's, you know, I had the idea of doing the morning thing because I'm watching other people do it. I'm watching other people do a morning show. Um, and I think when times are tough, 
Um, if you have a bit of a community, if you're fortunate to have people who have any interest in what you say, I think it's the time to get out in front of them. And, you know, you can't buy a thing of us today. Uh, if nothing else, we're, Kua's helping us give you away coffee. So we've got nothing to, we've got nothing to sell right now. Um, we just want to, yeah, share that idea of being grateful for what we have, being grateful for those around you, um, being grateful for what you can change and what you do have within your control. Um, and then focusing on challenging yourself as well. So when we come out of this time, when we emerge on the other side, um, we're at least stronger and more resilient, if not in a better position, because we might have gone backwards a little bit, but hopefully stronger and more resilient. Um, Thanu, you're amazing. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you, Josh. It's always a pleasure to have a chat, even online this way. I'm very grateful for that. We'll take, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> pleasure is all mine. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. You're amazing. We wish you all the best. Have a great day. And Thanks, we'll guys. see you tomorrow if you tune in for Episode 8 of Coffee with Campus Consultancy. We are on with the amazing, and I say amazing without even being sure if we've got Isabel or Thomas this morning because they're both amazing. So I'm going to bring it up right now. I'm going to tell you who to expect tomorrow at 8 a.m. if you're tuning in. Um, Josh is stalling as he loads up an Excel sheet like a good old. I haven't totally killed the engineer in me. I guess this <laughs> is still in an Excel sheet. That's um, <laughs> so me. Oh, we've got, sorry, we've got Isabel on Thursday. We've got Raquel tomorrow. So Raquel's from the University of Sydney um, working with an actor. So again, running social enterprises. So if you're into it, if you want to know more about social enterprises, we said that about Kura and you're like, what's a social enterprise? Um, we'll talk about that tomorrow, another student leader. Um, but yeah, still a bit of an engineer at heart. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Can't run away from that. Can't run away. Tanu, you're amazing. I wish you all the best. Have a wonderful day. As are you, Josh. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye, all. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.